Thank you for staying with us. It's still News Hub. If you just tune in to the program, you're already uh, uh, some minutes late, but um, we're glad you have joined us finally. Now, we are about two days uh, to the governorship and state house of assemblies election, and many things have been said by the governorship candidates of many parties in the various states, with people having full knowledge of who is contesting for the position of the governorship in the various states. But the same cannot be said for candidates uh, who are vying for the state's assemblies. A little attention has been paid to those who are seeking to be members of the state houses of assembly. And that's why this morning we are shifting our focus to what is expected of a state uh, legislator. Now joining us in our legal studio, we have Obi Manuel Kuponu, who is an ADP, that's Action for Democratic Party, uh, Lagos State House of Assembly, Badagri Constituency. You're welcome to the program. Thank you so much. Good morning. Good welcome. morning. Obi Manuel. Yes. Um, uh, people would say that, like I said in my you know, intro to this um, segment, uh, people really don't know who is representing them in their various constituencies. Yes. Uh, you, you say you live in Badagri and you're representing the Action Democratic Party, you know, in the Badagri constituency. How well uh, do your people know you in Badagri and the constituency you're representing? Well, my, my people know me so much because before now I've been involved in community development activities. Great. And um, as a matter of fact, I published the community newspaper that runs on the Badagri corridor of Lagos State. And through that medium, I've been able to interact with a lot of people, a lot of uh, leaders, a lot of people at the grassroots. And the, com the community newspaper, we call it The Voice. It covers about 126 communities on that corridor. And that offers me the opportunity to know what the issues are, what the problems of our people are, and uh, what we can actually do to make sure that we solve these issues and make Padagri a better place for our people. So for me, it's like we've been trying with our mega resources to fix the place, to promote Padagri, to let people see that Padagri is not all about what they think. You know, when you mention Padagri, all that comes to mind is bad State roads. Trade. Oh, OK. And then I'm you come back. Be. Yeah, OK. Historically, you go to slave trade, you go to the tourism, point of no return, point of no return you understand, point of no return, the first story building in Nigeria, the first school in Nigeria, first church in Nigeria, and all that. Now, but the, the bain has been that you cannot tour without good roads, because tourism is about touring. You cannot tour without good roads. The first problem that Agri is facing right now, so many bad roads, so many bad roads. So we have reported these issues over the years. I'm talking about between 2006, March 2006, till now. That's about 13 years that we've been on the streets covering, you understand, uh, reporting what the issues are in Badagri. But unfortunately, we, the, the only thing missing in Badagri, aside the assets that God has blessed the place with, is good representation. You can imagine that someone has been in the House of Assembly representing Badagri since 2007 till now and there is nothing to show. Okay, great. Nothing, absolutely nothing to show. And our people are out there crying, shouting that we want a change. If for 12 years you have represented your people and you cannot offer them anything, no bill, no proposals, nothing. So coming back to your question of people not knowing whom their, their representatives are in the state assemblies, it's just a matter of the kind of system that we run in this country. You can imagine if the governorship elections and the House of Assembly elections were to take place on different days. A lot of these guys hide under their governorship candidates. They do nothing, especially in Badagri. They do nothing. OK. Uh, let's just uh, get our guest Nabuja introduced and then we'll uh, have a back and forth discussion with both you and her. Uh, joining us now from Abuja Studios is Esther Uzoma. Esther is a lawyer as well as an alternate chair of the Situation Room. Esther, good morning and welcome to News Hub. Good morning. 
All right. Uh, it's, it's a good thing that we have um, Obi Manuel Kuponu here, who is uh, vying for uh, the State House of Assembly by the constituency. Uh, but tell me, uh, some State House of Assembly don't live in their constituency, and they only come in when elections are closed to share money and disappear. Uh, maybe the reason why a lot of people do not know them or identify them. Uh, can you tell us if this is a narrative across Nigeria and what can be done about this? <laughs> Thank you very much. You see, the tragedy of our electoral process and our democracy is that the actors, you know, who actually vie for positions, sometimes they do so not because they believe in what they are doing. They simply do so because it is simply a very viable means of sustenance. And therefore, you find out that sometimes people who emerge as House of Assembly members, you know, you see the apparent disconnect between them and the persons they are even representing. You see, so it, 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 they, they just show up when it is convenient and then take the money, uh, you know, receive whatever inducement there is to be received pass the budget and all that. But that's, you know, active, close involvement with their constituency is lacking. This is not good. That is why our focus, therefore, is on concentrating the citizens to make demands, to ask, ask questions, to be involved in the process of governance. If the citizen is involved, it, is, it will be very easy for the citizen to say, ah, this man, ah, when was the last time you came to our constituency? We do not know you. You do not live here. So if it's a, by our active involvement and participation that we can be able to fish out these, in quotes, bad eggs, you know, and then ensure that they do not represent us. It is, well... They have given you reasons that it is not uh, safe, uh, security reasons. And truly, sometimes you find <laughs> when they go to the villages... ...guard them and do what? Secure them against the citizens they are representing. Look at that huge disconnect. So this is, this is the tragic reality of our times. Uh, eventually, we will get to a point where this will not happen. People who represent us are people we know, who live with us, who feel our pain, who fetch water from the same stream, you know, and all that and all that. Not people who come from somewhere and want to impose, you know, or I, am, I have arrived attitude on us. Eventually, we'll get there. But this is what it is right now. All right, Esther. Very, very well said. Now, uh, let me ask you this very quickly. Uh, is it a, a question of... Um, living amongst the people or understanding the people, isn't there a need for us to want to question the abilities, the qualifications of people, the understanding of legislative matters of people that want to vie for legislative positions in the state assemblies? Well, uh, democracy is not about intelligent quotients, no. The idea, the philosophy, the spirit, the democratic spirit is about representation. So if we decide that this is the person who lives among us, it doesn't matter really whether they understand the legislative process or not. That's an entirely different conversation. But the whole philosophy of democracy is that this is our choice. It doesn't matter whether they are literate. It doesn't matter. This is the person we have chosen. That is, that's, that's, that is the, that's textbook democracy. So whether or not the understanding, because the understanding of legislative process, you know, raises a discriminative bar. Because sometimes we fall into the mistake, you know, there's an arrogance that accrues to intelligent people that, oh, you are, in, you are intelligent because you went to school. That is not correct. You know, th th there's a native intelligence that, you know, is unparalleled. That is why sometimes when we come to the cities, you know, we thought that I know it, I have arrived at it too. The villagers, when, they, when it comes to village meeting, <laughs> their level of politicking, you know, is, is Machiavellian. You see, so once it is democracy... It is about choice. It doesn't matter, you know, the mystery, the exoterism that surrounds the legislative process. All that matters, first and foremost, is that this person is our choice. 
That is why legislators are giving aids. Those aids, their duty, main duty is to, you know, uh, you know, find a way of introducing the protocol, you know, of House of Assembly to these elected officials. So first of all, it is not about knowledge of democratic process. It's not about PhD, MSc, MA. It is about the choice of the people. If the people decide that this will battle pusher, who has lived in this community, who has acted as our security, who calls when we answer, if they decide that this is our choice, so be it. It's not about understanding. No, 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 not at all. That's a different conversation. All right, Esther, we're going to come back to you very shortly. Let's speak some more with uh, Mr. Kuponu right here in Lagos. Uh, you, you've heard the opening remarks of um, Esther. She's yeah. a lawyer. Yes. And uh, you complained earlier that um, maybe in your constituency, you've been complaining about yeah. certain things not being done. You, yeah. you cited the bad roads and yes. all that. Now, she says it's not about the intelligence quotient. It's not about how much education you've acquired over, t over the years. Yes. Would you say that um, people's choices uh, are based on what, how much their representatives know. For example, if you use a wheelbarrow pusher and say this is the money you want, would you regard that as, uh, if, that, if that constituency doesn't develop, would you say because this person has no education, that is why we are having a backward, uh, backward development. development in our constituency? Would that be the case? The first thing is, I agree with her on the summation that democracy is all about the people. choices, the people making choices, do you understand? And um, the other thing is, yes, intelligence might not be enough, but it's, there's a kind of intelligence that we are not used to. It's called emotional intelligence. Knowing how the other person feels and relating with that person like a human. Now, when you come to a community, like she said, there's, there's another thing called native intelligence. When you live in a community, you must know where the shoe pinches. You must be able to relate with them. Not coming back home after four years and sharing money and bamboozling everybody, making them look like Jesus has arrived. No. You interact with the people. You let them understand you know their pains. And you have solutions. So I agree that it's about choices, but the truth is not ordinary choices, but we must make the right choice. Making the right choice is what can give us that effective representation that we need in our communities. And I believe that as big as Nigeria is, if everyone representing their state constituencies know what they are doing, the problem of the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria will be reduced by half. That is why we are offering Badagri people what we call beyond lawmaking. B aside the primary function of making laws, mm. oversight functions and those other things, it's, it's also about looking at the community. What are the resources here that God has blessed this place with that we can actually activate for the good of the people, for the development of the place. If I mention coconut right now, the first place that comes to your mind is Badagri. Okay, aside that fruit, coconut, what else? Has Badagri done with its coconut? I believe that as a state legislator, you can actually show the way towards how we can actually use that for economic empowerment. Presently, all around the world, coconut oil is more expensive than crude oil. For instance, a liter of petrol is 147. A liter of coconut oil is about 1,500 naira. We can actually empower women and youths to go into production, set up cottage industries around that peculiar environment where you have that uh, produce yeah. in, in large quantities. Set them up, link them up with uh, organizations that can actually fund their businesses, help them register the businesses so that they can deal with corporate organizations. Not that they produce coconut oil and give it to their children to hawk. You produce 
in commercial quantities that companies who are into pharmaceuticals, who are into uh, cosmetology products, all those things, hair cream, body cream, they can actually source their raw material from you. Mm. You can actually show that way as a legislator because you're actually holding in trust the commonwealth of the people. There's something you must do with that, not to buy cars and build houses and buy mechanical generators in your compound. It yeah. goes beyond all that. Uh, Ovi, yes, sir. Uh, let's, let's move the conversation a little bit further. I, I'm a bit concerned about um, the politics in the House. Yes. Uh, uh, wouldn't you see a need for aspiring um, Assembly members to have a knowledge of the understandings of the workings of the politics of the House? It's, it's a good thing to understand, to have emotional intelligence where you understand what the people need and then you have that in mind. Now, how do you propel this? How do you push this forward when you get to the House? Isn't that an important factor? The House, for instance, in Lagos State House of Assembly, you have just 40 members. Yes. Two from each of the old 20 local governments. Yes. I'm sure even as a candidate of ADP, when I get to the House, I propose uh, programs or yeah. bills. Yeah. I'm sure the governor or the government wants to do something meaningful to the people. There is no hiding place for a golden fish. If you have a brilliant idea, anybody in the world will listen to you. And even when it comes to lobbying, which is one of those things that, I mean, one of those ways people get things done in the House, we can lobby. The truth is, but that is not the only coastal area in Lagos. So we can work with every other legislator from other coastal areas to find, find a common place, something that is common to all of us, that we know that when we push this, it's not going to be like a Badagri bill. Then it's not to be a bill for coastal communities in Lagos or riverine communities in Lagos. There's somewhere in my constituency that I traveled to some two days ago. You actually take a boat for like 20 minutes. You have about six communities in that area. You call them Moba, Ojogu, Okobo. They are very close to Ojo, but they are in Badagri. But you can't get there without a boat. Okay. They are riverine. Sincerely, till this moment, there is no trace of development. People living by riverside are complaining that they don't have water to drink. Who is representing such a place? Do we need to lobby to do that? How much does it cost to sink a borehole for such a people? It's about emotional intelligence. It's about feeling the pains of the people. Even the laws that we make, there is a, there's something that is holding Badagri down. You know, th there are no companies in Badagri. People think probably because of slave trade or some other things, that's why the place is the way it is. There is a law in Lagos State called Global Acquisition. It's been placed on landed properties in Badagri. To the extent that you buy a plot of land, 60 by 120, you can't get C of O, unless you know the governor or you know the commissioner who can actually help you out. That's why people sell it so cheap. And when you don't have property rights, I'm sorry, you'll be poor. Okay, Obi Manuel, what we're going to do is that we're going to expand it beyond Badagri. Yes. Uh, because you, you will be representing every other person Part of vying, Lagos. For this, yeah. vying for this same uh, position as you are across Nigeria, not just in Lagos. Okay. But now let's speak with Esther. Esther, uh, there is an assumption that um, a lot of um, state assembly members are puppets of state governors. Hence, you know, people cannot hold them responsible or accountable for anything uh, done in their constituency. Should this be the case? And why do you think it's the case if it is the case? Thank you very much. Um, that assumption is very real. You know, it is a fact. The relationship between assemblies and that and the governor has been one of the puppets and the puppets here. We find that it, it always tends, you know, to the reality, the grave reality, that whoever controls the pulse, you know, also controls the politics. And whoever controls the politics 
eventually controls, you know, what the level and quality of lawmaking. That is it. We have seen hostile takeovers, impeachments, removal of speakers of state houses of assembly the moment they tend or dare to exercise or hold an opinion different from that of their governor. We have seen pictures of speakers of houses of assembly, you know, kneeling down before their governors. This is the charade. This is the reality. And it goes against the grind, you know, and the spirit of separation of powers. Ordinarily, the assembly should be an arm, a distinct arm of government, you know, making laws, you know, giving just so that when the executive and the uh, uh, legislature come together, the spark will produce something better, you know, for the citizens. And we have seen severally, in several attempts to amend the constitution and truly guarantee independence of the House of Assembly, we have seen a resistance even from the Houses of Assembly. That is terrible. But what should happen is this. The panacea is, once again, the involvement of the people. When we start recalling the rigorous process of recalling our assembly members, when we stop hailing them and dobalaying for them, when we stop making them champions, realizing that truly these people are on whatever pedestal they are because we gave them a ticket, when we put them on the line, so to say, always putting them on your toes by being involved in democratic process. Let me tell you, what, when they realize truly that they are accountable to us, it doesn't matter who the governor is. They will now assume the position and say, listen, I am representing my people. This is what my people want. You know, so that the needs of the people will no longer be lost in the politics of survival. Because what we see, look around, look, for instance, take, for instance, the passage of, uh, you know, the budget, for instance. What happens? Have you, look, across, you know, the states, the budget, you know, it's like the governor just comes and they stamps it. No strong resistance, no disagreements. You know, these things sh should not be. You know, let us grow. You know, that is why public platforms like this is so important. The key is participation. When citizens participate, you know, the ele elected officials know that they owe it to the citizens. As such, they will always think about the citizens, you know, before they take any action. Uh, okay, um, Esther, why wouldn't you think um, that all of this is coming to the fore um, the issue of um, rubber stamp legislators in the state houses are coming to the fore because of the issue of um, godfatherism from the onset. <laughs> well, you see this godfatherism. Sometimes people get into the houses of assembly not because they have godfathers. Sometimes we have also seen people who, you know, assumed offices just because the people, they are connected with their people, you know. But what happens is that whenever they now get into the house of houses of assembly and they enjoy the perks of office, you know, survival, it becomes an existential question for them. Survival becomes the paramount thing on their minds. And then what do they do? You see them cross carpeting, you know, changing political affiliations. So that they can get juicy positions, you know, so that they can, you know, generally get some a level of prominence. They forget how they got to the house. So Godfatherism in itself, really, is not it's not entirely bad. But it becomes very, very bad when somebody wants to bestride the idea of a godfather bestriding the narrow political space like a color shoe. So, you know, if you must get something, you want, you know, that demeans the involvement of the people. That makes a mess of the whole idea of democracy. But godfatherism to the extent that it nurtures, perhaps provides an existing structure you know, uh, for beginners, it is not entirely bad. The concept is bad when it is stretched. You know, one of the reasons, for instance, that people like me are saying we need godmothers to emerge is that when godmothers emerge, they will help and get women into political offices. 
we we are actually advocating for the emergence of God for godmothers. We are looking for a time when the Florentia Alakijas of Nigeria will arise and say, listen, this election season, I'm sponsoring 50 women, houses of assembly, seniors. Put their money down. To that extent, it is not bad, but it becomes bad when it tends to strangle the democratic process. I like the sound of godmothers, you know, it, 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 feels, it feels good, you know, to hear godmothers. But we'll come back to you, Esther. Uh, let's talk with Obi Mano here. Uh, let me put you on the spot. About this time on Saturday, uh, the election should have started. People yes. voting for the governorship and then the state assembly yes. uh, representatives. Yes. Uh, tell us, what are the roles and responsibilities of people vying for the state assembly? Let us know so that um, when we find you wanting, we know what to do. So tell us the roles and responsibilities of people like you vying for such positions. Basically, there are two roles to be played. Enact laws and conduct oversight functions on the affairs of government, especially the executive arm of government the ministries and parastatus. The legislature has the constitutional right to, vas to have oversight, you understand, to supervise, let me put it that way, to supervise their activities. Especially when committees are formed and you belong to a committee that a particular ministry or parastatus is involved in, for instance, housing. The Ministry of Housing and um, Works and Housing, as it is always the case. If I am the committee, the House Committee on Works and Housing, my committee has the right under the law to supervise all the act activities of that ministry. So that's oversight uh, issue. In terms of lawmaking, we have to look within our society and look at what is wrong and what could be done. That is where proposals, bills are sent to the, to the House, are presented to the House on behalf of the people. I mentioned earlier that we have land issues in Badagri. And I think there are other parts of Lagos that have that issue too. But one thing the government has done is that over time there have, there's been uh, excision of those landed properties from the global acquisition. So the law permits the operations of government because the government itself could actually violate the law. But as a lawmaker, the House of Assembly makes sure that the government plays according to the rule. They enact the law for the citizenry, for the government, and everybody. Because where there is no order, you know what? The, the next thing is chaos. But for me personally, I think it should be a case of beyond lawmaking. We should be involved as lawmakers. We should be involved in our communities. That is my... The, the, the reason for that uh, question is, uh, yes. in, in some areas in Lagos, yes. since it's, your, it's the state you're yeah. vying for a position in, uh, we have cases of cultism on the streets. We have cases of uh, armed robbery. We have cases of um, maybe healthcare centers that are dilapidated or not even uh, well equipped. We have yes. cases of uh, markets being on the roadside instead yes. of maybe inside the yes. markets. How is it that you can, you know, how is that representative of different um, constituencies can actually look into such uh, Issues. The funny thing about Lagos State is that there are laws regulating such activities already. But the truth is, like Madam Esther said, many of our legislators are not doing what they're supposed to do. Ministry of Environment, for instance, there are a lot of parastatals, a lot of agencies under that ministry. Yet Lagos is dead. You and I know Lagos is dead. So, the House Committee on Environment, what are they doing? If the ministry has gone to sleep, the legislator is not supposed to go to bed. Because the truth is, the people back home are banking on you to give them good governance. And as a legislator, you can actually summon the local government chairman to the House of Assembly for questioning. 
you can summon the commissioner to the House of Assembly for questioning if the environment is dirty, if the health, uh, primary health care centers are dilapidated. These things are there, but people are not functioning. The laws are there. Making new laws, we just, most times what we do this is just amendment, amendment, and that's, that's in English you hear in the houses. Amendment. But that we don't have laws, that one is not, uh, is, that is out of it totally. So it, the, the onus is on the legislators to wake up to their responsibilities, the reasons why they were voted in the first place. Okay, um, let's, let's, let's leave you there. Let, let's talk with our, um, Esther quickly before we let her go. Yes. Um, hello, Esther, if you're still there. Yes, yeah. quickly, before we let yes, you I'm go, here. the reason need to improve um, our state legislat legislating is extremely very key. I made mention of um, the issue of Godfatherism, which you had said in, in itself is not completely um, a bad thing. But we still see the bad side playing out over time. Like um, Zika alluded to, the issue of rubber stamp um, um, legislators in our state house. We need to move away from this. The executives need to be kept in check. I mean, there should be some level of check of our, of our executives. So tell us, what is the way forward before we let you go? Way forward quickly, Esther, before we let you go. The way forward, you know, to check the excesses of the menace of God for that reason is citizens' involvement. Another way also is the judiciary. When these two, you know, issue, when these two areas are strengthened, when citizens, for instance, get aggressively involved in governance, when they make demands consistently on their elected officials. It puts the pressure on them. And this can work also when our institutions like of governance, for instance, uh, the electoral money based body, when our votes count, then the elected officials will know that his existence is dependent on the goodwill of his constituents. And when our justice system is strengthened, when they know that you can drag them to court and demand, listen, under the Freedom of Information Act, tell me what you did with social and so money that came to our committee. When they see the wheels of justice, you know, grinding expeditiously to address issues as they arise, believe me, if that, is the, that is the panacea. It will bring a cure to the excesses. And then also quicken the legislator to take his place and represent his constituent effectively. So much Esther Uzoma, a lawyer as well as an alternate chair of the situation room. Thank you so much for your time with us on the program. And uh, finally, Obi, Obi Mano, uh, now you are vying for a position and it looks like you have met with the grassroots people. But most times when people you know get this position, they are detached from the people. So how can people access state lawmakers when eventually they get there on Saturday, after Saturday's election? How accessible you know, are you to the public? Well, I'm accessible to the public. I am, my name <laughs> is everywhere. Even before I, I found myself in politics. But what we are going to do to remain accessible to the people is that every quarter we're going to come home to give account of what we, we are doing or what we'll be doing or what we have done for the people. Presently, we are going around sharing a kind of complimentary card with contacts to everybody in our constituency. And why are we doing that? Wherever we are, call us. It's my direct line. It's a line I've been using for over 15 years. And that is something that we want to bring in you can talk to your legislator. In fact, it is an advantage for you to have feedback. When you're operating and you don't get feedback, you get lost. Because the person you're actually representing needs to tell you that, oh, Mr. Man, you're doing it well, or adjust to the left, or adjust to the right. So we have created that channel already that people can reach us anytime. 
and sincerely because I'm young and I believe the future is still ahead, we would do it better. Because if we wanted it to remain the way it was, there wouldn't have been any need for us to run for this election. Okay. Tommy Emmanuel, that's a good place to, to end the conversation. Thank you so much. Um, thank you for coming on the show. Thank and you. We wish you all the very best in thank your you aspiration. So thank you so come much. Saturday. Thank you so much. Well, uh, that's, uh, that's it on the segment. We'll take a break when we come back. Our conversation will continue. Don't go away. You say something, you say no.